The damage from Hawaii's Kilauea volcano is growing. Dangerous levels of toxic gas are seeping from fissures. Lavas engulf dozens of homes and buildings, and nearly 2,000 people have been evacuated, but not everyone fled. Demian Barrios is a storm chaser turned lava chaser. He joins me now to talk about the impact of the volcano and what it's making on the island exactly. Um, Demian, thank you very much, first off, for joining us. You know, most people move away from the lava. You're running towards it. What can you tell us sort of about why you're doing this and what have you seen so far that surprised you? Well, you know, um, I, I've been an active uh, of lava photographer and, uh, and, and I've been calling myself a lava chaser on this particular flow because we've had have to uh, chase it. These fissure eruptions are not as predictable as most of the flows we've had here. Um, so we're running in there because we're trying to get near the area to be able to document, um, take some videos. Uh, we've also had a lot of the uh, residents and, com and, and community in the area reach out to us that are not able to have access. Um, and we're providing reports for them on the ground. A lot of people have asked us to check in on their uh, properties and safety, check in on animals and stuff. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of devastation here. Um, a lot of these explosions have been pretty big and pretty violent, sending lava bombs into near areas. Um, when the fissures open up, we have, you know, active lava just spewing out and shooting up into the sky. Um, and, and, you know, Leilani in particular has just been completely decimated. All the streets, a lot of the streets are impassable. They have lava breaching them. Um, even streets that don't have lava have cracks with steam coming out. Homes have been lost. And I know the community is, is under, under siege right now. A lot of people are shocked about this. And, and it's just been overwhelming to, you know, watch both the destruction as well as the power and the magnificence of this volcano. Yeah, magnificence is such a great word. Tell me, though, Demian, what is it like to be so close to the lava and these hot spots? You know, um, it, it's very intense. Um, it, it can get very hot, obviously. Um, and there's a very, uh, you get a very strong sense of being present. You feel very alive. You know, you can feel the heat. You can smell the different smells. You can kind of taste them in your mouth. Uh, when the explosions go off, you can, you can feel those reverberations in your chest. You can feel the ground shaking, um, watching the lava shoot up into the sky and, and these huge plumes being formed, especially at night, is, is very amazing. I mean, it, your jaw just drops, you're sitting there. Uh, sometimes I've had to pinch myself and make sure I'm, I'm still here because it's just an amazing sight. You know, my heart goes out to all the, the people who have lost homes and, and the community and the people being evacuated and displaced. Uh, but having said that, this is a very impressive eruption and um, we're trying to, you know, I've been getting close, getting photos, documenting, and uh, it really just makes you feel alive. It's almost an addictive feeling being down here. I can imagine how it could be very addictive and very dangerous at the same time. You were talking a little bit about these new fissures that keep opening up. Tell us a little bit more sort of about the threat that these fissures pose. Well, you know, um, most of the flows that we've seen here on the Big Island are either the A'a or Pahoehoe flows, and those tend to flow downslope uh, so they're somewhat very predictable, mostly mellow. Um, you know, they have been known to take over homes and communities, but uh, they're very predictable. These fissure eruptions, as the ones you can see in here behind me, you know, we're up to fissure number 20. So there's been 20 separate cracks that have opened up and turned into fissures and actually been shooting lava out. Um, and, and those have been a little bit more dangerous because of their unpredictability. We don't know where they're going to pop up next. And when they do, you know, they, they can happen somewhat suddenly. And, um, you know, lots of homes, dozens of homes have been consumed by the lava. Thousands of people have been evacuated. And, and this entire area, you know, it looks like a war zone with, you know, streets shut down. We got the National Guard here. There's police barricades everywhere. And especially you go through Leilani, you know, it looks like a war zone. There's cracks in the street with smoke coming out. Everything looks abandoned. There's lava shattered, you know, splattered all over across the road in some areas. Um, and, and, you know, I can't. I don't know the exact figure, but I know several hundred, if not thousand acres of, of um, the area has been com completely covered by this lava. You know, the images that you've taken, they're mesmerizing, they're terrifying at the same time. We know tourism's taken a hit. How concerned are businesses and the people of the island that this is going to have a lasting impact to their bottom line? You know, um, it's very likely that it is going to have a longer lasting impact than just what we're seeing today. Um, I know there is a certain amount of tourism that is attracted to the lava. Um, however, with the limited access and the danger and it not being readily accessible like previous flows in Kalapana, um, I don't think that that's going to bring in a lot of tourists. 
Um, a lot of people are shocked by this. A lot of people in the area that previously thought they were in a safe location, even though they were living in either Lava Zone 1 or Lava Zone 2, are now highly considering leaving the area permanently. Um, I've talked to several people who are making plans to move off the island, and I know that that's going to huge have a huge impact here on, on the local economy. It's a very tight-knit community here. Um, you know, we haven't had an eruption like this since 1955. Um, so within this last century, you know, people have really grown accustomed um, and comfortable being around this volcano. And now that we have this eruption happening, it's a, it's a reminder to everybody that um, things can change and then all of a sudden it can, it can be not so comfortable. And so that's definitely having an impact on the community. People are starting to question safety that uh, and, and, and take into consideration what the lava zones are. You know, like I said, up until this point, you know, it's kind of, oh, you know, whatever, we live in, in lava zone one. But now that this eruption's happening, it's definitely at the front of everyone's conversation. It's definitely something people are considering, and especially people with families and children and stuff that they want to keep safe. Um, you know, one of the only ways uh, most people are, are thinking that they can stay in the safe area is to just avoid the area immediately. So unfortunately, that may have some, some larger ramifications here with the community as well as the economy and all of the businesses as well. Demian Barrios, thank you very much for joining us, Demian. Hey, thanks for having me, guys.